Good morning. It's wonderful to be here at the Jefferson United Methodist Church with you today sharing together in worship. I just have a couple of announcements that I would like to bring to your attention. Please remember that if you have not yet ordered Christmas rolls, we are taking those orders now. They are available in the flavors of apricot, nut, and poppy seed. And we are still looking for people to come in and help prepare the dough and prepare the rolling. Um, the next day. Several dates available. We will make sure they go out again in an email to remind you of those dates. We are also collecting items for our Christmas bags. Our outreach committee is very faithful in helping us be present to Mitchell Manor. So these bags are available here at the church. We are asking people to contribute around 12 ounce bottles of body wash, body lotion, and shampoo and three and a half to four ounce tubes of toothpaste. Our friends at Mitchell Manor Helping Hands are very much appreciative. We will, uh, we will take these things to Mitchell Manor along with um, ingredients for a Christmas dinner for the residents and the staff. Everything that you do to maintain this ministry and presence with them is greatly appreciated. Please remember that we have a new online giving site BJ, I'm hoping that we can find a way to make a banner or something to help people with this site, but I will remind you again that the address is https colon slash slash secure dot myvanco dot com slash capital L hyphen capital Z zero zero capital C. Those of us who have used it are very happy with the user friendly nature of what it is, and uh, we encourage you to use that to make your tithes and offerings. I believe that's all the announcements that we have for today. So let me call us together in worship. Today on this second Sunday of Advent, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and be light for our darkness, be comfort in our grief, a friend for our loneliness, an oasis for our searching. O come, O come, Emmanuel, for you will restore our joy, heal our wounds, and bring us peace. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is Let There Be Peace on Earth.
should light the Advent candles from our wreath. I always take the light with which we light them from our altar, for that is the light that represents God in our midst. Last Sunday, we shared together in lighting the first candle, the candle of hope. We relight it again today, reminding us of Christ's coming, coming to fulfill the promises of God. And today, we light as well the candle of peace. We are reminded that the prophet Isaiah said, Comfort, comfort my people to a nation that was torn in so many ways, a nation that was anxious about invasion and exile. As, for, as Isaiah himself foretold the coming of the Prince of Peace, our world today still experiences so much violence and hardship. And so we wait for that same Prince of Peace. In Christ we find hope. And our peace is found in Christ. We light these candles again today to remind us of Jesus' life-giving peace to all who trust in him. Hear this prayer. We're in trouble, holy God. So many in the world do not know peace. In their countries or in their hearts, we use weapons of steel and barbed words to wound one another. We seek balm for our restless hearts and things that only make us more wounded. Open our hearts to Jesus so we may have the peace of his holy presence and live it in our unpeaceful world. Save us from outside violence and inner turmoil. We need you. Come, peaceful God, come. Amen. we have children who are worshiping with us today. And I have a question to ask you, our young ones. Do you ever fight with your brothers or sisters? Or do you sometimes have little arguments with friends in school? You know, when my kids were little, I would send them into a bedroom, those who were fighting. And I'd say, live or die. Come to a solution with your problem and then let me know and Come back out, and we can all be together. Now, nine times out of ten, by the time uh, they had solved their problem, they were so busy playing with things in their room that they weren't even interested in coming back out anymore. But perhaps some of you young people here know what it's like to 
sometimes feel as if someone doesn't hear your side. Someone doesn't listen to you in an argument. But he started it, but she did this, but he did that. When those things happen in our lives, our lives aren't very peaceful, are they? They're very disruptive. They're full of conflict, full of not getting along. Well, you know, we all know that that's part of being human. But one of the things that we try to teach our young ones in church is that we can come to peaceful terms with each other. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea, our young ones. When I say you have to make peace, I don't mean that you have to just give up and shut up in an argument. It is never making peace for one person to not be heard and to just be told, I just don't want to hear it anymore. We make peace when we listen to each other when we listen to what's going on with the other person, and when we're able to tell that other person what we don't like about what's happening. Peace isn't easy. Peace takes work. We are celebrating and worshiping a savior we call the Prince of Peace. And when we talk about Christmas, we talk about the Prince of Peace being born as a human baby. Now that Prince of Peace is Jesus. And it is the responsibility of the adults around you to help you learn what it is to make peace with each other. I pray that as you grow older, you will have adults around you who are good at helping you know how to find real peace, peace in which we listen to each other, peace in which we want to hear what the other person's opinion is, peace in which we come up with, with an answer to the problem together. Adults, it is our job to model and to train our young people. And every one of us hearing this also knows that every time we have the opportunity to teach it, we learn the lesson a little bit better. Let us pray. Lord, learning peace is not easy. Making peace can be very difficult. We pray for our young ones, our young ones who are part of our worshiping community. We pray that in their lives, they will have adults who will show them, teach them, guide them in learning how to make peace, your peace in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We come now to our time of offering together, and as always, I encourage us to take a few moments as we sing our offertory hymn together, take a few moments to think not only of what we offer monetarily to the work of the church, but what we offer through our gifts and graces that God has given to us. One without the other is a lonely gift. So take a few moments as we prepare for our prayer of dedication to think on the gifts that you will bring to God in this week to come.
few prayer concerns this morning that I need to lift up. Lisa Pierce's mother, Dolores, is in declining health, and the hospital staff has said that she is in what is considered the active stage of seeking that threshold between this world and the next. So we pray for Dolores that she may find comfort and that she may find her way in Christ. We pray for Lisa and Ryan and all of their family, their children and the extended family. We pray for their comfort as they accompany her as far as they can and sit vigil by her side. I would like to offer prayer for Anne, who is the grandmother of my daughter-in-law, Dara. Anne is in the hospital. She has COVID and is experiencing some other difficulties and is having a very difficult time. So I pray for God's will for Anne. And tomorrow, a member of our congregation, Ron, will go to the hospital for surgery for cancer. And we pray for him. We pray that the surgery will go well and that healing will be good and according to God's purpose. We pray for his family as they sit vigil with him through this process, as they have been accompanying him along his journey with cancer. And we pray for the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, everyone in the hospital who will be caring for Ron. We pray that they will do their best in the service of their duties. I want to lift up prayers for Mary Lou as well, Patty Felix's mother, and uh, ask prayers for her. She has been in the hospital with Ken pancreatitis, but is doing better. BJ, do you have any prayer concerns today? For the family, friends, and congregation of Brother Mel Heilman. Family, friends, and congregation of Brother Mel Heilman. How long have you worked with Mel? About nine, nine years. Nine years. He was 93 when he passed, so you can do the math as to how old he was when BJ started working with this amazing man of the cloth. We give thanks for his life. BJ, would you lead us in our prayer hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. I heard the bells on Christmas Day Like a choir. 
ringing, singing on its way. The world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime. A peace on earth, goodwill to men. lessons today, but the passage from Malachi will read in the context of my sermon. But I will lift up now the passage from the first chapter of the Gospel according to Luke, verses 68 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets of old that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant. The oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him, all our days, and you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the light, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of our, my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as we lift them up before you this day be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. How has your watching and waiting gone this week? Have you been present to hope and its possibilities? I hope those of you who have them have been able to use the devotional and daily calendar cards in your Advent packet. Last week's Advent calendar cards, for those of you who do not have them, I'll share this, began by inviting meditation on the words, hope looked down and saw despair. I will go there, said hope. Last Sunday, I introduced you to a poet named Padre Ochuma, whose book in the shelter gives tremendous witness to God with us, a God not observing us from afar, but a God in the midst of all that we are. Padre, in his book, says it's important to say hello to here, whatever here may be. Hello to God. I will be reminding us throughout this season of Advent of this theme of hello to that I have chosen and reminding us of the poem shared by Otuma written by David Wagner. It is called Lost. Stand still. The trees ahead and bushes beside you are not lost. Wherever you are is called here and you must fear it, treat it. That was my Freudian slip for sometimes here is fearful. You must treat it as a powerful stranger. Ochuba encourages us to say hello, to be present to things we might otherwise ignore around us, perhaps even run away from. Perhaps if he were using these Advent calendar cards, he would say, and Hope said, hello to despair. 
This week, our cards, and again, I will share the beginning words with you for those who do not have the packet, begin with the words, peace looked down and saw war. I will go there, said peace. And peace said hello to war. Tradition during the season of Advent brings us to remember on the four Sundays before Christmas the words hope, peace, love, and joy. Easy on the soul if you know hope, live in peace, are full of joy, are surrounded by love. Jesus came to a world in need of hope, hungry for peace, wanting joy and yearning for love. During this holy season, as a people of faith, it is imperative that we practice our belief in the midst of life. It is imperative that we take care not to construct a make-believe world in which we need only Jesus in a manger and not Jesus abroad in the world. Hello to Advent, for we still live in a world in need of hope, hungry for peace, wanting joy, and yearning for love. Where will we find the strength to greet despair, to greet war, to look down and see war and say, I will go there? Where will we find the strength to be hope, to be peace? In the babe, of course. Jesus looked down and saw us. I will go to them, said Jesus. Vulnerable, I will go dependent, needy, unable to feed or clothe myself. Jesus said hello to us. Our Old Testament reading for today comes from the prophet Malachi, the last book of the canon of the Old Testament. Malachi was perhaps not named for an individual, but was simply named messenger, for that is what Malachi means. While in seminary, I took a class on messianic literature taught on Thursday nights from 7 to 10 in the basement of the School of Theology. It wasn't my, one of my stellar moments of my student career. Hard to stay awake, hard to pay attention, to be alert. Oh, maybe it was the perfect metaphor for waiting and watching during Advent, for wanting to stay focused on the things in this season that help us think all is well, rather than focus on the purpose and the need for Jesus to be born anew in us today. What does this messianic prophet Malachi say to us of God? What does the messenger offer to us in our waiting and watching? Hear these words from Malachi 3, 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as, as in former years. Malachi offers the Messiah as one who will cleanse us and purify us, and not particularly gently. I always think of scenes from Gunsmoke, where Luke is bathing poor, is it Matthew? In that old galvanized tin tub scrubbing away at him, that is the image I hold in my mind of God cleansing us and purifying us. Fuller's soap was a strong and unrelenting soap used to cleanse fabric to its pure state, to prepare it 
for being dyed with many colors, and silversmiths used a fire hot beyond bearing to purify silver to the point of reflection like a mirror. There's an old tale about a silversmith who is asked by an observer, when do you know the silver is ready? The smith replies, when I can see my reflection in it. And the story implies that God might refine us until he can see us reflected back to him. Now please don't, after worship, go online and look up refining silver. Is this story true? Don't worry about it. Because I will promise you that if you look up refining silver, it will not take you long to get to such complicated descriptions of the process of refinement that will require an extra degree behind your name to understand. Just see the beauty in the story. We will come back again and again to our mirror in the corner of our sanctuary, a mirror that reminds us without ceasing that we are called to reflect God's image into the land of the living. If refinement by God makes that possible, then refinement is a gift. Hello to cloth and silver. Hello to the refining presence of God. In the later verses of the third chapter of Malachi, there is a powerful message for God's people of all time. Verse 5 speaks of God's judgment of the things that need to change. Verse 6 says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O children of Jacob, have not perished. God's faithfulness saves us. In God, hope springs eternal. In our great and incredibly loving hope, peace is ever possible. So what about peace? If we think of peace as the absence of conflict, as the absence of war without and we did within, we do it no justice and we will never find it. We do God no justice to diminish peace to such an understanding. Peace, God's peace, it is what makes it possible for us to rise in the midst of conflict and find the truth that an unchanging God who offers us refining and purifying is always with us. God's refining brings hope, brings peace in the midst of that which would tear us apart. We sing, I've got peace like a river. But rivers rage at times and rivers exceed their banks. And God in the midst brings peace, even as we are flowing seemingly out of control and out of bounds. What does Advent and Christmas mean anyway if we do not consider what in this season God brings to living in a world which is often lovely and often not? Hello to life. When we have peace like a river, we have the peace of God which passes understanding. We have peace that holds us as we face trouble and doubt. We have peace that comforts us. When we sit vigil with those we love who are ill, we have peace that gets us through when we see no way out. We are refined and restored by God's peace which does not change. Rivers regain their banks and lose their rage. We have peace like a river in God's hands. From Malachi to the messenger to John the Baptist, our great God has hoped for us peace. Two messengers. We read in Luke the words of Zechariah, father of John the Baptist, speaking as he was filled by the Holy Spirit. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
Ochuma wrote a book, uh, wrote a poem which he offers in a book featuring Advent. Jesus, you are always at the world's end, standing there with people for whom everything has fallen away. In the hidden corners of humanity, we find you abandoned with the abandoned. May we never forget that the luxuries enjoyed by some are not enjoyed by all. And may we be stirred to turn our attention towards the work of beatitude, the work of blessing for all. Because this moved you and moved you and kept moving you towards the work of beatitude. Is there any one of us worshiping today who has not at some point in their life stood at world's end? And if you have not, think of Otuma's words when the time comes. We find great solace and happiness in this season. We pray that it will be a joyful time. And we find God's grace for living through all that life brings, even for the times we find ourselves at world's end. God's grace is with us so that we might find peace through it all. God's peace, which passes understanding. Hello to the messenger. Hello to peace. Our final contemporary piece today is called Hope, Peace, Joy, and Love. And it is always a joy when I have an opportunity to introduce a piece of music written by BJ. Thank you. 
these words of blessing, these words of beatitude? Can you be a voice crying in the wilderness? Can you proclaim that God is active in the world? While we would like to resoundingly say yes, sometimes perhaps our answer would be maybe. The time is near of the crowning of the year. We sing with angels setting the roadways and the buildings humming as people who are being changed to go into a world that is being changed. In the week to come, remember to hope. Remember to seek peace. Remember to wait, to watch, to prepare. And know that the blessing of God, our creator, of Jesus Christ, his son and our savior, and of the Holy Spirit is upon you along the journey. Amen. Amen.